So to start out, we are going to make two of the central spiral squares. So for my t-shirt, I'm using um, Hobby Twister Solid. Um, but because this t-shirt is made to measure, so you basically just take the measurements from your favorite t-shirt or, you know, something you know that fits you well. Um, you can use any yarn um, that you like and the, the sort of the measurements will work out the same. So I'm using um, various colors of Twister Solid just because I like the drape that it gives you the drapey feeling. Um, and with that yarn, I'm using a, a three and a half millimeter hook. You will also need your scissors and a darning needle for sewing in your ends. So let's get started. So I've already made one of my squares, so I'm going to show you now how to make the other one. So I'm going to get my purple and unlike the t-shirt that I was wearing earlier that I showed you, um, I'm actually going to be doing the rainbow spiral in the centre and the rest of the t-shirt I'm going to be also doing in this purple because I think it's going to look super sexy. Um, so let's get started. It's been a while since I've made a video so I'm going to have to keep reminding myself to take my time and show you what I'm doing. <laughs> so I'm going to put a slip knot on my hook to begin with and then to start the first round let me just move that out the way oh, pop my glasses on that will make things a bit easier won't it? there we go um, so to start with you're going to chain five one two three four Five, and then you're going to join to your first chain with a slip stitch to make your little circle that you're then going to place the rest of your stitches into. So to start with we're going to chain three which counts as your first double crochet and then I'm going to make a double crochet into this little um, space in the center of our ring. So to make a double crochet, you're gonna yarn over, insert your hook into that space, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. And that's your first double crochet. Then for our corners throughout this square, we're gonna chain three and then into that same center we're going to make four double crochets so yarn over insert your hook pull up a loop yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two so that's one two Three, four double crochets. We're going to chain three for our corner. And then we're going to do another four double crochets. So yarn over, insert, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Two, three, four, and just move your stitches around a little bit if you need to. Chain three for your corner, and then another four double crochets. So yarn over, insert. Pull up a loop oh, and sometimes you'll find 
the first stitch after your corner, your chain. Can you see how my chain has slid around my hook? So you need to try and sort of hold it steady if you can. Pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over and pull through two. And another three double crochets to make this set of four. And then chain three for your last corner. And then we started with our chain three. So we need another two double crochets to make this side of the square. So one and two. And then what we're going to do is we're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of our first chain three. So into this, where are we? There we go, into the top of that chain three there. What on earth is my dog doing in the hallway? Slip stitch, sorry if you can hear him. He's a menace. He's very cute, but he's a menace. So that is the end of round one. So we're gonna cut off our yarn. And you're going to finish by pulling through. And that is the end of round one. So you can pull your tail tight. Tighten up your loop a little bit. And that's the end of round one. And I'm going to go and investigate what my papa is up to. I shall be back. Okay, so let's try again. Because the dog was being a menace. Then I came and I videoed all the way up to round five without pressing record. So I've had a mini Cadbury's cream egg and I've composed myself. And the dog is possibly going to be a menace again. But let's try and, you know, soldier on. So round two. For the second time for me. I'm double, triple checking that I've pressed record and I have. Hi. Okay. So slip knot on your hook. And for round two, we are going to start in this first, first of the four double crochets on one of the sides. And I'm going to be through, um, throughout this pattern, I'm going to be using standing stitches. Um, if you're unfamiliar with standing stitches, I am going to show you how to do them. I find them much easier now because I've, I've been using them for a few years. Um, I do have a separate video on standing stitches um, on my channel. Um, I will try and put a, a link to the video down in the description. If I remember, if my brain doesn't explode, you know, all those things. But I will show you now how to do a standing double crochet, which is how we're going to start round two. So we're going to do a standing double crochet in this first stitch. So to do a standing double, you want to yarn over your hook, but try to hold on to your slip knot if you can. And then you're going to insert your hook into the stitch. Pull up a loop. It can be a bit fiddly because you're holding on to your other stitches. And then yarn over and pull through two and yarn over and pull through those last two and try and hang on to your tail with these two fingers if you can so that it doesn't escape you. 
and there it just looks like a regular double crochet there are no ugly chain threes pretending to be doubles because they're not doubles they're chain threes so we're going to do round two round two what are we doing standard double and then we're going to do a double crochet in the next stitch and then in the next two stitches we're going to do two treble crochets so for a treble you yarn over twice whoops try that again yarn over twice insert your hook into the stitch and pull up a loop and then you yarn over and pull through two yarn over pull through two and yarn over pull through two three times which is why it's called a treble in US terms sorry that's another thing I forgot to say I'm using US terms all the way through all my videos because I just find they make far more sense for for a double you yarn over and pull through twice so it's a double and for a treble you yarn over twice insert your hook and pull up a loop and then you yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two and yarn over and pull through two and then we're going to chain three for our corner space and in the corner space you're going to make two half double crochets so for a half double you yarn over and insert your hook into that space pull up a loop yarn over and pull through all three loops so yarn over insert your hook pull up a loop yarn over and pull through all three and in the next two stitches we're going to do two double crochets And in the next two, two treble crochets. And doing the different heights of stitches is what's going to give you the swirling effect. So chain three for your corner space. And into that space from the round below, you're going to do two half doubles. One, two, and then two doubles in your first two stitches. And then, and I'm going to be uh, crocheting over my tails from the previous rounds. I'll show you how I do that. So into the, where you join to the top of your chain three, sometimes a bit tricky to get in there I'm going to do a, a treble into the top of that stitch there we go and then into the last stitch going over my tail I'm going to do a treble mm -hmm. Get in there. Where are you? There you are. Treble into that stitch. Then I'm going to chain three for my corner. And then again, working over my tail, I'm going to do two half doubles in that space. One. Two, and then two doubles two trebles bless you And then chain three, drop your tail. Into that last space, two half doubles.
and then we're going to join to the top of your standing stitch that you started with so sometimes a bit fiddly into those top loops and join with a slip stitch and then you can cut off your yarn and that is round two. Oh my goodness we may get this video finished soon so for round three, I'm going to be using turquoise. And again, you're going to start with a slip knot on your hook. And I like to start on the opposite side just so that all my ends aren't ending up all in the same place. Um, and for round three, we are going to start with a standing double in this first stitch. So it's a half double crochet. So sometimes when you've got a half double, let me show you, after a chain space, the, the, the top of the stitch is actually these two loops here. Um, and it can sometimes look like it's part of the chain, but it's not. You've got your one, two, three chains there, and that is the top of your half double crochet. So that's the stitch you want to be going into. So we're going to start with a standing double. So yarn over, hold on to your loop, and insert into that stitch. Pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Um, where are we? Round three. So you'll find for each round, it kind of gives you a clue of how many of each stitch we're going to do. So for round three, we're going to be doing... Oh, he's attacking his bed now. Honestly, this puppy. Don't ever get a puppy. <laughs> I'm kidding. He's brightened up my life, honestly. Two... <laughs> three lost my train of thought now yeah so three round three so we're going to be doing three doubles three trebles and then in the spaces at the beginning of each row three halves I'll show you when we get there so we've done three doubles three trebles one two Three, and then we're going to chain three for our corner and then in this space we're going to do three half doubles one two three and then three doubles don't forget that's your first stitch hiding under there one two, three, three trebles, one, two, three, and you're going to chain three for your corner and three halves in this space. One, two, three, and then three doubles. One, two, three, and again I'm going to go over my tail with my three trebles. One, so you just hold it along the back and as you insert your hook make sure you're sort of catching that strand as well 
because it does make it a lot easier when you're weaving in your ends, which is like the marmite of crochet. Lots of people say they hate it. Some people say they love it. I actually don't mind it now. I used to hate it, but now I find it quite therapeutic. Chain three for your corner and then three halves into your space from the last round. Two, three, three doubles. trebles oh it's gone quiet if we don't look at him maybe he's gone to sleep if you make eye contact with him he thinks you want to play so we won't look we'll just hope for the best <laughs> chain three and then in this last gap we're going to do three half double crochets one two, three, and we're going to join to the top of that standing double that we started with. Gently. There we go. Going to snip off our yarn and pull our tail through. And there we go. And you can see now it's starting to twist in the middle. Plays with your mind. Okie doke. So that's round three. We're going to go on to round four, which for me is going to be green. And again, slip knot on your hook. Now, as I said, for each round, like in this round, you're going to be doing four halves, four doubles, four trebles, but we only ever put three halves in this space. The next ones then will be going into the stitches. I'll show you what I mean. So for this round, we're going to start with a standing half double crochet. So that is going to be going into this first stitch here. Remember I said about the half doubles can look a bit sneaky, sneaky. So we're going to, to do a stand in half, you yarn over like you did with the double and hold your slip knot, insert into the stitch, pull up a loop and yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook and that is a standing half double crochet so then we're going to do four double crochets one two three and four and we're going to do four trebles And four. And then we're going to chain three for our corner. And then, as I said, even though we're doing four half doubles, we're going to do three in the space and then the last one in the stitch. So three halves in that space. One, two, three and then a half double crochet in this first stitch. And then four doubles and four trebles. Three, four, four trebles.
then chain three for your new corner, three halves in the space, one, two, three, a half double crochet in that first tricky stitch, and then four doubles, four trebles, the same again, chain three, three halves and a half in the first stitch, carry on around and I will meet you at the end of the round. So I'm just coming to the end of round four and you want to join to the standing half double crochet. It can look a bit like where is it, what even is it, there's the top of the stitch right there. So you want to insert your hook into those two loops and make a slip stitch and then you can cut your yarn and pull it through and that's the end of round four. Round five for me is yellow and like I said round five we're going to be doing five of everything so five half doubles, five doubles, five trebles so you pop your slip knot on your hook and where am I going to start? Let's start here so I'm going to have three half doubles in the corner, so I want to do two half doubles at the beginning of my row. So I'm going to join with a standing half in this first stitch. And a half double crochet in the next stitch. And then five doubles. Five, five trebles, and you want to chain three for your new corner make three half doubles in that space one two three and then half double crochet number four goes in the first stitch number five in the next and then it's the same again five doubles five trebles chain three and then five halves, three in the space, two in the stitches, all the way around, and I will meet you at the end. So we're just at the end of the round, I'm going to join to the top of that standing half double into those two loops with a slip stitch. And that's round five. Guess how many of each stitch we're going to do in round six. Dun, dun, dun. Ugh. And there we go. So round six for me is orange. Where's my orange? Oh, I already have a slip knot on my orange. What did I do? too small now. Obviously something I decided to do and change my mind. There we go. So round six we're going to start with a stand-in, half double, I'm going to pick this side here. Stand-in half double in your first stitch.
And then what did I say? Round six. So another two half doubles. Because remember, we're going to have three halves in the corner. So three here now. And then six doubles. Two, three, four. And six, and then six trebles, Then chain three for your corner and three half doubles in this space. One, two, three, and another three in your first three stitches. Don't forget that sneaky little stitch. One, two, three. And then six doubles. Four, five, six. Is that six? I might know you're putting me off with your chewing, boy. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm thinking maybe the next video I should do when he's having a really long nap. <laughs> Six trebles. One. Two. Three. and six and the orange is bringing all the colors with it for some reason you guys pals here you know? stay over there um, when was I chain three for your corner and then you're just gonna do the same again so three halves in your space and another three in your first three stitches and then six doubles six trebles same, 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 same. And I will meet you at the end of the round. So at the end of the round, we're gonna join with a slip stitch to the top of the standing half double that we started with. There we go. I do apologize for the pups um, chewing noises in the background but if you've ever had a teething puppy you will know that if he's chewing something he's allowed to chew leave him to it because otherwise he'll disappear and will chew something that he's not allowed to chew my poor kids have lost a couple of pairs of shoes <laughs> down to that so that is the end of round six and round seven for me is red and I'm going to start on this side here because all of my ends are sort of bunched over there at the moment. So I'm going to grab my red and make a slip knot. And for round seven, we are going to do a standing half double crochet in this first stitch. Like so. 
and then another three half doubles. One, two, three, and then you guessed it seven double crochets, seven treble crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then the trebles. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then you chain three. And then three doubles in a space. Um, sorry, half doubles. One, two, three, and then into your stitches. Four, five, six, and seven. And then seven doubles to over my end again. Three, four, five, six, and seven. I'm going to drop my tail there and do seven trebles. And then chain three for your corner and then you're just going to carry on the next two sides doing that three half doubles in your space and then four in your stitches and then seven doubles seven trebles and the same again and you can pause the video here and i will meet you at the end so i'm just on the last corner space of round seven Three half doubles in there, two, oh no, see, look, I got distracted and I didn't do my chain three. It's because I'm worrying about the dog making chewing noises, having a cold, having a coughing fit, wondering why I decided to do this today. One, two, three. It's because I really, really want to do this video for you. three half doubles in the last space and then join to the top of your half double crochet your standing half double with a slip stitch and snip off your yarn and now we are on to the last Round, you'll be pleased to know with this chomping doggy in the background of part one, which is for me going to be let me see, let me see, pink, lovely pink, and this is round eight. So, we're going to be doing eight of each stitch, and then I will quickly show you how to weave in your ends and that will be that for part one how exciting the dog's gonna go for a super long walk before i film part two i think that's a marvelous idea and i'm sure you will agree right so let's find our first stitch 
So round eight, we are going to stand, uh, stand, we're going to stand, we're not going to stand, we're going to start with a stand in half double crochet in that first stitch. And then half double in the next three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Sorry, I had to count the three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, five half double crochets. And then we are going to do eight of everything. So eight doubles. <coughs> Excuse me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then eight trebles. And I'm sure, like me, you subscribe to crochet channels that are oh, seamless and professional and polished and I'm here to tell you this isn't one of them I'm really sorry but we are who we are you know why hide it sometimes I'm a bit chaotic and I think if we're being honest we all are and if I waited for things to be perfect, I'd end up never doing anything. Right, now we're going to chain three, two, three. And in your corner space, do three half doubles. One, two, three. And then another five to make eight. Three, four. Five, six, seven. I'm going to go over my tail again for number eight. And then eight doubles. One, two, three, four. Six, seven, and eight, and then eight trebles. Really, really do like the way this yarn works for clothes. I've only recently started making clothes myself and this is my first tutorial wear, uh, wearing something. See, I just can't speak today. Talking's hard. Um, making something that you can wear. And I just do love that it's something that, because I think what always put me off with clothes was the sizing because I tried to make something years ago for my last doggy, bless her soul. She's in doggy heaven now. One, two, three. And she was a Jack Russell. And by the time I'd finished making it, following the pattern, it probably wouldn't have fit a Chihuahua puppy. Um, and I think it scared me with my tension and my gauge was just off compared to everybody else's. So I, I stayed away from clothes for a long time. And now that I've started having the confidence to make things, well, I've gone down the rabbit hole now and, and there's just so many things that you can make and wear, which I'm sure my kids love that I'm just wearing crochet stuff all over the place now. <laughs> um, but yeah, just don't be afraid. Like with this, you literally, I'm going to show you in part two, you will just make your square, which is going to be the back panel and the front panel of your T-shirt. You're just going to make it to a certain um, measurement of centimetres. There's going to be no, you know, 
10 rounds of this measures this for me and 10 rounds of that measures that for you. You're just going to measure it in centimetres. So it's going to be easy peasy. So I went off on a tangent and then where are we? One, two, three. So. Oh. Four. Eight, and then I will carry on, carry on until the end of the round. Eight doubles, eight trebles, chain three, don't forget like I did. And then in your space, three halves and then five halves. And I will meet you at the end. So I'm just coming to the end of round eight. Where's my little taily tail? So I'm going to join to the top of that standing half double crochet. Like that. And snip off my yarn. Pull my tail through. I'm just going to show you. So as you can see, if you... Pop your little fingers in the gaps of the chain spaces. You can see how your square is going to look in the centre of your t-shirt. Wow. Looking good. So I'm just going to show you quickly just before I finish this part. Oh, look at them. Look at them all. Um, how I weave in my ends. Now for this cotton yarn um, that is sort of quite thin I've got quite a sharp um, darning needle just so that you can actually go through let me do this centre one first so pop your end on your needle and let me try and hold this up nice and close so as well as going through the stitches themselves this centre one's actually quite easy to bury. So we'll do this one first. All you really want to do is just try and go in, go in and out a few times, try and catch some fibres, go split your yarn if you can, because that adds to the the resistance, I suppose. And weave it back and forth a few times and make it nice and secure oh and we lost the end of that one he came off pop him back on um, which direction were we going? Yeah, try and go back and forth in a couple of directions just to make it really hard work for this yarn to work its pesky little head back out again. Because that's all you really want to do when you weave in your ends. Obviously, you want to get rid of them, but you want to make them, particularly for something you're going to wear, you want to make it hard for them to poke their way back out again and just snip the end off. So let me show you how I do these ones that we've crocheted over. So as you can see, this purple strand was joined over in this corner here and I've crocheted over it there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop it on my needle. And then I'm going to go back in the same direction. But before I do, I'm going to catch some of this purple here, pierce a couple of strands and just pierce through and catch as many bits and bobs and strands as you can. And as a general rule, I tend to go back and forth at least three times, sometimes more, if I feel like it's going to be a troublesome end 
There we go. And that should be okay for that one. And don't pull it too tight because obviously as soon as you're wearing it and you're jigging about getting down with your bad self, um, you know, it's going to stretch and that will then make that little end pop out. I mean, obviously all of these are going to be on the inside of your t-shirt anyway. So hopefully that will help. So that's all I'm going to do with all of these little ends. I'm going to weave in and out. So in, so in, so in. Popping in and out of strands. Pierce your strands if you can because that adds to the friction. There we go. Back that way. I'm going to come back down this way. Pierce through there. And he is in good and proper. So we're going to chop him off. Like so. And that is that for part one. So once you've finished weaving in your ends and you're going to then do that all over again and make another one. Unless, of course, you want to just make your t-shirt with a swirl on the front or maybe even a surprise swirl on the back. But I'm going to do both. And I'm going to show you in part two how to just make this square bigger and bigger and bigger until it's the size that you want it to be. Um, I'm going to be doing an extra large t-shirt. So I've measured, it's going to be a 70 centimeter square. Um, but I will show you how to start off the next bit in part two. Thank you for watching. It was a bit chaotic. I'm not going to lie, but, you know, what in life isn't? Well, possibly lots in other people's lives, but my life's currently not like that. But I enjoyed making this for you anyway, nonetheless. I've been up and down like a yo-yo. Um, and, yeah, if you don't mind the chaos, please subscribe. <laughs> uh, leave me a comment just to say, it doesn't matter, it was chaotic. We love you. Or, you know, if you're going to be mean... Please don't. I might cry. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. And I hope you found this helpful. Again, I will try to... Um, I'll put up the the link for the video for standard stitches. Because if you're learning to crochet, honestly, I wish it was something that I'd learned way back. God, nearly 10 years ago now when I learned how to crochet. Because it really does make um, things look so much neater than the sneaky chain threes um, pretending to be doubles because they're not. And that's that. So thanks ever so much. And I will see you for part two. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.